There have been many MLB superstars who are remembered for their off-the-field controversies rather than their on-field accomplishments. Take the all-time hits and home run leaders, for example. Both have been blackballed from the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose has the most hits in MLB history, but because of his gambling during his baseball days, he has been banned from Cooperstown. Barry Bonds, the all-time home run leader, has been left out of the Hall of Fame due to steroid use. Despite the legendary talents of these players, both are remembered for their controversial issues rather than their accomplishments. Today, we are looking at the downfall of one of the greatest shortstops the game has ever seen. Shortstop has produced plenty of superstars throughout the history of baseball, from Honus Wagner to Emmy Banks, Ozzie Smith, Cal Ripken Jr., Derek Jeter, and so many more. The position is built for players who are often stars on their teams. One player who mixed incredible defensive ability with blazing speed and strong hitting skills was Omar Vizquel. The Venezuelan shortstop had a career that spanned an impressive 24 seasons. He began his career with the Seattle Mariners, before joining the Cleveland Indians, where his production was at peak value. Following his time in Cleveland, Vizquel spent the rest of his career with the San Francisco Giants, Texas Rangers, Chicago White Sox, and Toronto Blue Jays. But his best years came as a member of the Indians, and is a member of the Indians Hall of Fame. He was also a three-time All-Star and an astounding 11-time Gold Glove winner. You would be hard-pressed to find a player who could pick it at a short like Vizquel could. Since he was never a fantastic hitter, his overall production went overlooked at times, but he was as valuable as a player could be with his ability to save runs on the defensive end, and also established himself as one of the best bunters in the game. Vizquel led the league in sacrifice bunts on four separate occasions. Despite the value of bunting being diminished in the modern game, Vizquel's ability to lay it down was a direct factor in his team winning games, whether he was simply sacrificing himself to advance a runner or bunting for a base hit. When he retired, people were excited to see if he might someday be enshrined in Cooperstown. He certainly had a case for the MLB Hall of Fame. But then, his once strong legacy came crashing down, and similar to Rose and Bonds, there's a good chance Omar Vizquel will be permanently blackballed from the Hall of Fame. When Vizquel entered the big leagues, he was a young and promising talent coming out of Venezuela. After struggling mightily at the plate in his first three big league seasons, the shortstop figured it out in 1992 and hit a 294 with a 340 on base percentage. He also stole 15 bags, and the future looked bright. In 1993, he won his first gold glove, which sparked a streak of nine straight years with a gold glove. The guy could field the baseball. The question was, would he hit enough to be a valuable asset to a big league organization? After joining Cleveland in 1994, Vizquel became a vital part of the Indians' success in the 90s. Despite never winning a World Series, they were always in the postseason mix and made it to two different fall classics, but lost in 95 to the Braves and then dropped a heartbreaking World Series to the Marlins in 1997. The loss in 1997 actually led to a long-standing feud with closer Jose Meza, who surrendered the game-winning hit to the Marlins. Vizquel called him out for blowing the game, and Meza did not appreciate Vizquel's words. The two have had a beef ever since. To answer that aforementioned question about the hitting ability of Vizquel, in 1996 he hit 297. From 1996 through 2000, he consistently hit at least 280 or better. He also stole 30 bases or more from 96 through 1999, and added 22 more in 2000. And that was a vintage Omar Vizquel a gold glove winning shortstop who could hit for average and steal bases. A prototypical top of the lineup bat, Cleveland loved him. Indians fans loved him even after he left for San Francisco in 2005. Unfortunately, his legacy with the tribe will now forever be in question, but we will get to that in a moment. With the Giants, he was productive. He never made an all-star game with the team, but did add two more gold gloves. He finished his career bouncing around different organizations with the Rangers, White Sox, and Blue Jays, capping off a terrific 24-year career at age 45. Many wondered what was next for Vizquel. Was his time in baseball completely over? Would he try and become a baseball pundit for a TV network? In 2013, Vizquel got offered a job as an infield coach with the Angels. The move made sense, as who is a better candidate to be an infield coach than an 11-time Gold Glove winner? Following just one season in Anaheim, Vizquel signed on with Detroit Tigers to be a first base coach and serve as an infield and base running instructor. After three seasons in Detroit, Vizquel was offered a job as a minor league baseball manager with the Chicago White Sox. And that was when the issues began to pile up for Omar Vizquel and left his once strong reputation in question. 
The former Indians legend was sued by his own wife for an accusation that he was beating her. The report was made in 2020, but his wife said the incidents occurred in 2011 and 2016. She said that he had shoved and knocked her over, and also attempted to strangle her in the past. While Vizquel denied the accusations, the MLB had a full investigation into the matter, since both incidents occurred while he was employed by the league. With an already tarnished legacy, another report became public during his time coaching in the minor leagues in 2019. Vizquel was employed by the White Sox organization as the AA manager of the Birmingham Barons in 2019, but a report recently became public that he was being sued by the family of an autistic bat boy from that team. The bat boy claimed that Vizquel sexually harassed him on multiple occasions, and that nobody on the team would help him in his situation. He stated that when he brought the issue to light, he was laughed at by the members of the team. The report states that Vizquel targeted him for sexual harassment, and that Vizquel paid for more attention to the bat boy than his counterparts. The bat boy also stated that Vizquel and the team failed to uphold the American with Disabilities Act. The full report goes into explicit detail, and we will link an article to the video if you want to read further about the investigation. The fact of the matter is, Omar Vizquel was once a beloved baseball star with an excellent career in the big leagues. That legacy and respect is completely gone now, and Vizquel's Hall of Fame chances are slim to none. In terms of the talented shortstops the game has ever seen, there is no question that Vizquel is one of them. Some refer to him as the single greatest defensive shortstop of all time. Kids bought his jerseys, fans loved watching him play, and analysts raved about his ability. He was an absolute fan favorite. This was a man who had it all and worked hard to get there. The path from Venezuela to the big leagues is far from an easy one. It required hours of dedication to his craft and had to become one of the best overall players in his own country to stand out and even have a chance at Major League Baseball. He began chasing his dream by playing in the Venezuelan Winter League. He decided he needed a way to stand out even further, so he learned to switch hit, which is no easy thing to do. But the thought of becoming a switch hitting shortstop was appealing, so Vizquel worked hard to master it. At just 5 foot 9 and 180 pounds, he was skinny, but fast. He originally signed with the Mariners in 1984 as an undrafted free agent. After working incredibly hard to make his dream a reality, Vizquel was discovered by an MLB club. But the road was gruesome to make the actual Major League roster. From 1984 to 1988, he spent his time grinding away in the minor leagues. Finally, in 1989, it all came to fruition, and he never looked back, as he made his Major League debut with the Seattle Mariners on April 3rd of that season. And oh man, did he have a heck of a legacy on that game. Here is a look at all that Vizquel accomplished before the downfall of his reputation. This once afterthought of a prospect went on to post a 985 career fielding percentage which is tied for the highest mark of all time, and broke the record for most double plays ever turned. He once went 95 games without making an error, which is one of the highest marks of all time as well. He was the all-time hit leader from Venezuela, until Miguel Cabrera broke his record in 2021. He finished just short of 3,000 hits with a total of 2,877 which ranks sixth all-time amongst shortstops, trailing legends such as Derek Jeter, Honus Wagner, Alex Rodriguez, Robin Yount, and Cal Ripken Jr. All these players are in the Hall of Fame, except for A-Rod, and that is only because of steroid abuse. He also played the most games at shortstop in the history of baseball, with a total of 2,709. He was truly an image of durability. During his prime, he also led the Indians to five straight American League Central titles and two World Series appearances. He retired as a fringe Hall of Famer and a beloved legend of the game, and it would have been special if that was the legacy he left. People would have remembered him for generations as an exceptional talent. Kids who watched him growing up could have told their grandkids someday that they got to watch Omar Vizquel play during his prime. But in one of the saddest stories in the game, Vizquel completely threw all of the aforementioned accomplishments away with his off-the-field behavior. It led to a lawsuit, his marriage ending, and a disdain from the baseball community. This is truly the downfall of a superstar's legacy. The last time we saw Omar Vizquel in the baseball world, he was managing the Toros de Tijuana of the Mexican Baseball League. This was after he was fired from the White Sox minor league managing job and could not get a job in the big leagues, likely due to his actions. When the lawsuit was presented this summer, Vizquel decided to leave his position as manager of the Toros, and there is no telling if we will see him work in a baseball role ever again. The odds lean towards no, as his reputation will always precede him. 
Click the video on the screen to see how Shohei Otani became the best in the MLB.